Hello, this is Cynthia Ortiz. It is July 26, 2023. These are the Charles Perry Stalker Podcast. This is what the police are supposed to do for stalking victims. <clears throat> Not what TPD does. Um, TPD gives the report right to the offender, who then obstructs justice and destroys evidence. They didn't follow. They have never followed protocol when I file a complaint, ever. This is uh, the video about how stalkers will clone or hack the victim's phone. Okay, so these guys are sex trafficking. They're human trafficking. If I just suddenly disappear, everyone, um, I'm not going to go with Charles Perry or be trafficked voluntarily. They would have to force me against my will. We've been saying that for over a year. Mr. Perry has sold me to some guys in Houston. He took half the money up front. He's dying to deliver to get the other half. They've put deadlines on him. He misses the deadlines because we find out beforehand. I have help he can't get to. They will not call him back. They will not call him back. They told me Mike Neely was drugged. I said it before anybody else said it. I said it in January 2020. I emailed the Florida State's attorney and said, you got the wrong guy. Michael Neely was drugged. He didn't do it. Couldn't have. And then I said it again in March 2020. Mr. Perry then began talking to Hitman. We have to put her down. We have to kill her. So they then got recorded by the guys helping me, the officers, police, law enforcement. Mr. Perry is dying to have a hearing. I'm like, I'm not, I'm not sure you. I out sting out the cop and the Florida State's attorney and Gene Mitchell. These people are smart. You have Huntington's disease. You're not all there. And everybody's really tired of having to repeat the same thing for you. So I don't think you do want a hearing. I'll put you on the stand. There's a couple of questions that I would ask right off the bat. I can't tell you. It's a need-to-know investigation, Mr. Perry. I will not answer your questions about that, nor are you entitled to know who they are. They know you're looking for them. They'll call you if they feel like it's worth their time. So far, the need to repeat the same things for you is outrageous. Your delusion is outrageous. They also found out you have Huntington's disease that causes paranoia, delusion, hallucinations, psychosis, and impaired cognitive reasoning. So the first question I would ask you is, how often are you in Oklahoma? And when you're in Oklahoma, what are you doing with your day all day long? Provide a schedule, produce a schedule, and give us a legitimate reason for you to be in Oklahoma because nobody invited you to Oklahoma. How many times have you been with my family? How many times did you buy them dinner? How many times have you met with them? How many times did you or someone representing you or in your little weirdo club, corporation, whatever, get, gave them scripts and made them role play? And my coworkers as well. Why did you introduce yourself to my family? I would never take you around my family. I moved from a Lubbock in November 2013 to get away from Mr. Perry and his harassment. Um, I moved again from Dallas to get away from Mr. Perry and his harassment. I came home to Oklahoma to be with my family and have no more problems and no more drama and no more conflict. So why are you here? How often are you here? How often have you been around my family? How many times did you buy them dinner? Produce evidence of what you do all day with your time. What does your wife Jacqueline, your son Matthew, and your daughter Jordan think you're doing up in Oklahoma all the time? Produce it. Come on. Say it. You want a hearing? That's what I'll ask you. You want to go to court? Let's talk about it. Let's also talk about Michael Neely. So my guys record you right after I send the Florida State's attorney two emails saying you have the wrong guy. He was drugged in January 2020 and March 2020. And uh, by the way, he was. this happened six days after I filed the car vandalism report. I didn't name a suspect. I said it might be Starker related. Guess what they tell you right here, TPD? You need to keep up. You're really pissing people off. You have no idea. If you guys all knew what people say behind your back, Mr. Perry, David, Josh Burson, Joe Chat, if you knew what people said behind your back, you would not show your faces again. If you knew, Charles, what people said behind your skank ass back, you fucking reject, you would never show your face again.
please remember who it is you're talking to. We are quoting you every day, all day long for 10 years. Our guys won't dignify you with a callback. It's a waste of their time. You can put me on the stand. I will not answer questions related to my job. I will not obstruct justice for you. I will not give you shit. I can't answer those questions. You're under police investigation. They found out you had Huntington's disease and that Mike Neely was drugged while they were investigating you. So they hear you with a hitman. Let's do a, a false emergency at her work at Sensations. She's got a kind heart. She'll help. <clears throat> when she helps, then tell her that the guy she was helping has a virus. She needs a shot or she'll get it too and die. And the hitman said, what do you want me to do if she refuses to take the shot? And you said, you make sure she takes the shot. You tell her, you lie. You tell her she'll die if she doesn't. She takes the shot, she dies. It'll kill her dead. And then we'll tell her family it was just an unfortunate allergic reaction. What are you going to tell my family if I just suddenly disappear? So we know about your plan. We've already talked about it over and over and over and over. People are extremely irritated at the need to repeat the same thing for you over and over and over. Not just me. Not just me. You got a serious problem. So we are getting the information. We've always controlled the flow of information every day, all day long for 10 years. I have taken my time to type up what you just said. I can be working and I have to take my time. If I'm door dashing, I got to pull over, put it on pause and text something you just said. Because what you just, just say nine times out of 10 is going to hurt me. I have to get on it before you do it. Doesn't do any good to say anything after. And we've said these things over and over and over and over. So you sure you want to get on the stand? I outsting up the cop. He had no idea what I was doing. I outsting up Gene and Gene Mitchell and Travis Myers. They had no idea what I was doing. I had to I have to tell people here after the conversation's over. Even if you're a third party listening, you're not going to know. I have to say it after. Here's what I just got out of that person. And they did not know they gave me that. So, you got a slow problem, mental slow problem, Huntington's disease. You really want to get me to put you on the stand? First thing you're going to tell me is, why are you in Oklahoma? How often are you in Oklahoma? How often are you in Lubbock? You know who's not here? John Frulo. Why are you here? How often have you been around my friends and family? How often have you bought them dinner? How often has you or one of your loony bin friends walked in with scripts and made them role play? Jesus. Weirdo. Weirdo. I, we found out you trafficked me. Any other victim have that? They know they've been trafficked before and to who? I know. What does it mean that I know? What does it mean that I'm quoting Judge Parker and Judge Egan? What does it know that I knew you went duck hunting with Sam Cummings? Judge Sam Cummings. What does it mean that I have that? What does it mean that I've quoted Judge Morrissey? What does it mean that I've quoted Judge Kirkendall? What do you think that means that we have that? What do you think we're going to do with it? Answer those fucking questions. You're, you're already going to court without being there. Answer them now. You play these podcasts, don't y'all? Oh, she's harassing me. Am I? Okay, sure. So they had this plan now since for a while. It's been months. We've already talked about it over and over and over. Get her back to the club. Make sure she's dancing, not waitressing. Arrest her for taking her shoes off. Selectively prosecute her. Because at every club, in every town, everywhere, girls take their shoes off for one of two reasons. One, their feet hurt. Or two, to do part of the lap dance is an air dance. There's no sex. You're standing on the furniture. You don't want to poke a hole in it with your shoe. So you take your shoe off. And then as soon as you're done, you put it right back on. So there's no money exchanged for the taking off of the shoe. The money exchanges for a lap dance. There's no sex in it.
but you need your smear campaign. And the thing is, we, are, we already know you want to do that beforehand, not after. We control the flow of information, not you. Never, ha You never have. We always have. Started with the McNamara email. He wants to do a false arrest and coerce me. Yesterday, he's typing on my phone, I'm going to take your car. I'll give you a new car if you'll tell me who these guys are helping you. Enticement threats. Entice it's all it's threats and bribes with this guy every damn day. RICO Act violation. Now today you're illegally accessing my phone, aren't ya? Okay, hold on. That's our disclaimer. Gender discrimination, Title 18 and the United States Code 15, 12, and 13, and all applicable state laws that prohibit sex trafficking, sex exploitation, human trafficking, voyeurism, stalking, hacking, cloning, illegal access to an uh, electronic device, Coercion, witness tampering, victim tampering. I have a vic there's a victim's rights bill in Oklahoma. You heard of that, Mr. Kunzweiler? I have. You don't get to call my school again and tell them that you're my boyfriend. Don't ever fucking do that again. You're not. You're a job for me. Don't you tell anybody that. You, dis you, you fucking delusional whack job. Do not ever tell anybody that again. You are a job. I'm very good at what I... It's different when you do the crime to me. It's different every day, all day long, for 10 years. It's completely different than all your other victims I always find out before. Sex trafficking, human trafficking involves stalking. It involves hacking and cloning. It involves gaslighting. It's called witness tampering. We don't call it gaslighting. We call it witness tampering. Coercion. Right? Obstruction of justice, perjury. Fraud upon a court. So tell the judge, how often are you in Oklahoma and why? And what do you do all day with your time? Because that would be the first question I'll ask you if you want to do a hearing, sir. Ask the judges, what does it mean that she's quoting judges? Who, who said, first you have to prove she lied, then you have to prove she knows she lied? Uh-huh. Okay, so let's rehash Mike's case. The police investigating you told me he was drugged. I said it before anybody else said it. Depositions were not taken till May. That revealed he was dying and treated with Narcan for opioid overdose. There's not a bump on his head where he was knocked out in a fight. He doesn't have a mark on him. When he's talking to the police officer on the news, they show it. He says, I can't believe this. That you, I can't believe you. I'm feeling it in my hands. I'm not feeling. The police officer does not say, you've got injuries here, 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 and one on your head that now caused you to be unconscious and in respiratory distress. And here, here, he doesn't say that, does he? He says, well, it appears lucky what Chief Miller was beat to death. It appears Chief Miller was beat to death. Right, dumb, dumb. Where's the injuries on Mike Neely that indicated he did that? I fucking hate stupid. I hate any kind of stupid anywhere, but I really hate it with cops. I don't, I can't, I, I can't do it. I fucking cannot do it. I, I'm work. there's 40 cops helping me that are extremely smart, you say, at one time. I've been in, in, in med, I had my own businesses in, I had a medical company and I had a vascular disease clinic and I had a, uh, I did lobbying. So I'm used to people who are very smart, you only say it one fucking time. And most things you don't have to tell people with the finger paints and the crayons. They already know. Your need for repeat, Mr. Perry, and us having to repeat ourselves going, you're already caught, dumb dumb. We've already said it over and over and over. You were recorded talking about it. And then you talked about it again. And then you talked about it again. And then you talked about it even again. So now there's like 300, there's like 20,000 on, I'm going to take her car away. I'm going to take her car away and coerce her. Get her to the club. Get her, make sure she's dancing, not waitressing. Get her on taking her shoes off prostitution and petty theft. I didn't take any money from that club and you know it. We heard you talking about it. That's why I stopped opening the bag. I just threw it up on the counter. You said, you said the fucking money. I've already talked about it, Charles. And now today we're hearing, oh, they shit, they got the dates all wrong. Because I pulled up my bank statement so you can see when I got $4,000 from my student loan. And you can see when I left. There's a hotel bill. It's March 3rd. So, um, 
Now what are you going to do? How many perjured statements are there? Because you told people what to say. And uh, you're stupid and you're, you know, I don't know. So, I mean, it's been so easy. It's not even fair, Mr. Perry. Um, we've said you hacked my DoorDash app. You use it illegally. You have your people call. You block all other orders. The only orders I can do are your people's orders. So they can make an ID or get me on their doorbell camera or their surveillance. It is uh, one of the people that my guys talked to at DoorDash was horrified to know that their app is being used for organized crime. They were not have. They're fully cooperating. They're fully cooperating. Now what? Now what? Okay, they've had two people complain in the last. He's trying to get me fired. So they've had two people complain in the last couple of days that I didn't deliver the food. I always take a picture of it. There's two ways you can, two or three ways. One is leave it by the door. So you leave it in front of the door. You take a picture and you send the picture to the customer. Here's your food. The other way is they'll say hand it to me. So most people, most door dashers just hand them the food and walk off. I have, to, I have people trying to get me fired. So I have to take pictures of fucking everything. So I do. I got pictures of both. Both people that you had complain, I got pictures of both. And you know that. So there was there was a text to the to the lady that said Outback is taking a really fucking long time. In fact, Outback and I had a fight. Outback took forever to get this lady's food ready. And the girl comes and she's like, I'm really sorry. And I looked at her and I said, I'm not the one waiting for the food. Your customer who chose your restaurant to order from is waiting for the food to eat. Maybe I need to hurry the fuck up. And the same thing, this person got an order from Outback and then Sonic. So then I, I get the Outback order finally. And then I go to, and I texted the lady. They're taking forever. I'm sorry. And that's just disappeared from my phone that you hacked. Because that was inconvenient for you? Getting me fired? Okay, so I, I mean, I screenshot everything. Um, so then, 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 then I go to Sonic and we had the same damn conversation. There, it's not. It's two fucking drinks. It's a damn lemonade. Pour the fucking lemonade. I'd been here when I, when I got here because I had to wait for fucking Outback forever. So I go over to Sonic to pick up the ladies' drinks. The fucking lemonade. And uh, how long can it take to get lemonade? So I mean, this is just incompetence. Very unprofessional. So I go to pick up the lemonade and the same thing. I'm sorry. It's taking. I said, listen, you got people. Who wanted to eat from your place? They got hundreds of places they could order from. They chose you. You're making them sit at home and wait right now. It's not my problem. It's your problem, isn't it? I didn't order your food. Believe me, I'll never order your food after what I'm watching you do to this lady. Get your shit and get it. Get the fucking drink for me, please. Oh, oh, sure, okay. Oh my god. Wow. So, yeah. Did you have them do that on purpose? Do you call the restaurant and go, Don't get it ready right away. Is that Calvin that does that? Don't you make her wait. Make her wait. Don't get that ready right away. Make her wait. Is that you, Calvin, that does that? Oh, my God. All right. So, my guys are telling me he's trying to kidnap you this week because he gave those guys gave him a deadline to deliver you, and you're not going willingly. So, he's legit trying to kidnap you. So, and you won't go to the club. Because if you get to the club, they're going to do the false arrest, make you sign the affidavit, and then make you pose for some fake wedding. Because Charles needs to cover up the forgery. The forgery was used to call my school, Lucius. Okay, so we know about the forgeries. You even had a forged DNR. So you can murder me and I can't be resuscitated. We heard about that. Okay, so we get, uh, we get, uh, you need to cover it up. So you want fake wedding photos. I would never post, listen to me. If you get anywhere near me, your balls are in your brain. And you're already bought broccoli brain. You do not get anywhere near me. I'll beat the fuck out of you. I don't have to be in shape. I don't have to know judo from Japan or karate or anything like that. I'm full of anger at all the shit you took from me. 
you'll be in a coma in about two seconds. You don't get anywhere near me. Never, ever. You, I mean, I, you better have a... That's all I'm saying. I've told you, threaten me to my face, you coward. When I say that, I mean across the parking lot with your football helmet on in your nut cup. Because I kid you not, you get too close. I'll give you one verbal warning. Get the fuck away from me. And if you continue to come near me, you will get the shit beat out of you. And I will, I, I mean, it won't be hard. So, my guys are like, don't go to hotel rooms. And don't go to the airport. They're trying to literally, literally kidnap you in a hotel room or get you to the airport and as soon as you go into the airport to drop off the food they grab you and throw you on a plane so don't go to either one so i get a, a hotel i had like three in one day hotel deliveries three or four and so i i wouldn't take it uh up i, I left it in the lobby and i'm, te I'm texting the, the the person i'm like i can't i can't uh i've got somebody trying to kidnap me. i can't deliver to your room i'm sorry it's in the lobby it's not safe it's not safe for me to do that. So one guy is an asshole and he complains that I didn't deliver the food. So I'm like, well, I take pictures of it. Here it is right there. I'm not under any legal or moral obligation to go up to some strange person's hotel room and put my life at risk, nor will I. Nor will I. It's dangerous anyway for a single woman to go up to somebody's hotel room by the way, some of these guys, um, they get grab you and rape you. I mean, they use women's names. They don't use their real name. <clears throat> so that's not even smart to begin with. But for me, it's an extra, uh, you know, uh, since I have a, just an, a direct threat that was obtained by police. Don't go to the airport. Don't, don't, don't go to a hotel room. They are li li literally going to kidnap you. So I got to work. I'm just working. I'm a law-abiding citizen. You're not supposed to know what I'm doing for a job. So answer the question, Mr. Perry. If we're in a hearing, I'm going to ask you, how do you know what I do for a living? How do you know when I'm working, what zone I'm working in, and where I would be delivering to do something like that to me? Calvin, Sanjay, don't you guys set these up? Calvin and Sanjay? Yeah, Sanjay, your hacker. So I leave it in the lobby, and I take a picture, and I go, I'm not comfortable going to your room. I've had a threat. Here's your food. It's, on, it's in the lobby. I'm not under any obligation to go to your room. It's not, it's not safe anyway. And so I don't go to the room. Here's the other one last night. The out back in the uh, Sonic. Took for fucking ever. I told the kid. I said, here's, the, here's your food, kid. Uh, here, 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 you know, I j j had a verbal altercation with Outback for taking so long to get your food ready. They apologize and I'm like, it's no skin off my nose. Guess what? Guess what? It, it is actually, it takes my time up. But more importantly, your customer is sitting at, I, I, your customer is sitting at home waiting to eat while you jerk around and don't fix the fucking food in, t in a timely professional manner. They could go to any restaurant in this town. They chose you. Now you look inept. You just, you know, you're looking up. Because guess what? Most other restaurants, I walk in, food's ready, I take it and I walk out. And they get the food to the customer immediately. This one did the same thing, reported it. I, I, we didn't get our food. Bullshit. Okay, the next thing. See, this was a hand it to me. This one wasn't leave it at my door. This was hand it to me. I take the picture always. Because this is not the first time Mr. Perry's had somebody to order and say hand it to me. And then complain, oh, I didn't get my food. Okay, there's also the girl on TikTok that said that she got uh, deactivated by DoorDash because too many times she said I didn't get my food and they refunded her money. Then they started making her sign for it. Is the next step they'll take. And if you keep doing it, then they cancel your account. You can no longer order from DoorDash. Somebody actually told her, open another account in a different name. I, I did the same thing because I always say it. I didn't get it. I always lie. Then it's free food. The fuck? Who the fuck is that? That uh, you, you know that low? What a skank! Just steal food. Get DoorDashers fired. Could you lie? So I've learned the hard way. 
take the fucking picture. So there's the picture. The kid's got his food. Right there. See? He's got the Outback in the right hand, and he's got his Sonic right here. There's, there's his Outback right there. See the sack? All right. So you guys trying to get me fired twice in two weeks. I get that. Where I have to, f have to take my time. It, listen, they're going to get you on anything. I got to take my time and fix your fuck up. Same thing with my school, Lucius. You didn't take care of that. So I had to take my time. Now you're going to get a charge for that. Just so you know. It doesn't matter what local police do. Local police can be your bitch. Local police can be inept. They can be incompetent. They can be corrupt. It doesn't matter to me. I have help. I knew Mike Neely was drugged. I said it before anyone else. I got a McNamara email. I got a Fabian puzzle. I knew last night about the petty larceny bullshit. So I actually took a picture of my bank statement and sent it to somebody and said, get this to Mike Reed. Come to find out, y'all lied about the dates. You got the dates and shit all wrong, right? All right. Yeah, I knew, to I knew it needed to be addressed. Because you're under investigation, Mr. Perry. Why don't you explain that to the judge in your hearing? Yeah, you want to hear, he's like, I want a hearing. I don't know that you do. Make sure before you, make sure before you, you might get what you asked for. First, why don't you, in your hearing, explain to the judge, why are you in Oklahoma? How many times have you met with my family? How many times did you take him to dinner? How many times have you met with my coworkers? Why are you in Oklahoma? Fucking Homa. I came here to get away from you. Guess why we get information, Mr. Perry? People don't like problems. And they don't like you because you're causing them. And if you can hear the things people say behind your back, you, David, Lucius, Calvin, all y'all, you'd be too afraid to show your face ever again. We're quoting you. You're not quoting us. Right? Every day for 10 years. It's not once or twice. It doesn't happen from time to time. It happens every day for 10 years. Every day for a decade. I should, I've never met Lucius and Calvin and Sonjay that I know of, and yet I know their names. And that doesn't scare the fuck out of them. They're just not all there. They're just not all there. All right, so we got this here. Steve said she cannot be coerced back to the club because Charles wants to do the false arrest. Go in and tell her, you're stuck in jail. For the rest of your life, I'm going to do the same thing to you I did to Mike Neely. And make sure there's perjury and fraud and jury tampering and all that crap. Or you sign my affidavit lie. Recanting everything you've said. In court, not in court, everything. Just lie for me. Because you're telling the truth now. Truth is inconvenient for me. I need you to lie. Then you need to pose for this fake wedding. So I can cover up my forgeries that I did forgeries to get personal information to ruin you so you're easier to traffic and then we're gonna we're going you're going to be delivered I'm gonna collect my money then we're gonna have a honeymoon on a ship and I'm gonna toss you overboard because we can't or you're a floater in the bathtub because we cannot afford for you to pop up later and tell everybody that I made you sign I made you lie I made you be trafficked I can't afford you getting away somehow so we'll make, we're going to murder you. See, we already have your plan because you've talked about it over and over and over. And we got it. And we've talked about it over. You're caught, dumb dumb. You're already caught. So Steve said she can't be coerced. Then they can't do the false arrest. It looks like they, they, they lured her out there. And the guy's like, well, but he's hacked her DoorDash. And they called her school and fucked with her money. That is coercion. He is doing it. They won't let her make but a certain amount door dashing. It's all their people to call in. She's not getting any just regular orders. That's coercion right there. So, uh, you know, what, what is Steve? Steve needs to get in the loop. And uh, here's what they're trying to do. That's what he said. Well, but he took her school money away from her. And it interfered with federal funds. You made a phone call, you affected federal money, dumb dumb. Lucius, you're in a lot of trouble. I told you to fix it. I didn't I'm, we're not kidding, Lucius. We're not joking. 
You and David fixed the fucking problem you caused. And, uh... She can't do DoorDash unless they decide she can do DoorDash. And only in the zones they decide she can do them. And she can only make a certain amount. Canned food. Here's your canned food. Uh, I don't do canned food. Just so you know. So then she'll feel like she has to go back out there just to make money. Just to pay her bills. And then they're going to do it anyway. So, uh, here, hang on. All right, so I send this to to, I, to somebody who has a, I said, somebody who know, who has a regular communication with Sheriff Reed. Can you get this to him? As you can see, on this date, I got money in the amount of four thousand dollars. I didn't need to steal. Did I? No, I did not. On this date. Down at the bottom, it's kind of hard to see. March 3rd, you can see a, ho a motel bill being paid. There's a, um, yeah, motel bill being paid. It says motel right on it. You see it before? Nope. March 3rd is when I went and left. That's the day I left. Um, so I guess the book, what happened is we hear beforehand, Calvin, you're telling Amanda, you and David are telling Amanda, we can't um, have her look good. I've owned businesses, dum-dum. I'm catching your crime. I have been for a decade, every single day. I'm catching your money laundering in that club. You forget who it is you're dealing with. We quote you every day beforehand, not after. We found out Mike Neely was drugged because of the investigation into you. You were talking about it. So, please first of all remember who it is you're talking to when you make these fucking phone calls. And we hear them tell, we can't have her look good over our meth head drug dealer. Because she, they might fire her and then Cindy's going to work there. And Cindy catches our our crime. We can't have that. We got to get Cindy out. So what we want her to do is when she's setting up the bag of money, when she, I t here's what I would do. First of all, I have a key to the club and I've got the code to the safe. And uh, I, I go in every day, open the safe, take the bag of money out right before we open and set it up in the register. But then we hear what you guys were planning. You told them when she sets the take the money out. And we'll say that when she set the money up, that's when she stole it. So I stopped opening the bag and setting the money up. About a week before she started accusing me of this. You didn't tell her we already knew? You didn't tell her we already knew about it? I'm just throwing the bag on the counter. Here, you set it up. I completely changed my habits because we knew what you were doing. I did not any longer even open the bag. I made her do it. I'm not going to open the bag at all if you're going to do something like that to me. So for like a week, and we're like, she, she's not noticing that um, that's changed? What a dum dumb. We only counted the money at the end of the night. She comes running in at 10 o'clock. We're $200 short in the drawer. You took it when you, opened the, when you set the money up. I looked at her and I go, no, dumb dumb. We already heard you talking about it. I've not opened the bag at all. Oh, I threw the money bag on the counter. I've been sitting here with the money all damn day. I have been for weeks. It's just now missing. You're counting the money at 10 o'clock tonight. Just random. We don't count it till the end of the night. Just random tonight at 10 o'clock. You decide to count it. Wow. Nobody will suspect a thing. So I said, no, I did. No, you said you did it. I didn't touch it. I took the money out of the safe and threw it on the counter. You set it up. I didn't set it up. She goes running in the other room, comes running back. Oh, the DJ had it. 
Oh, did the DJ have it? Oh, did the DJ put it back? Wow, you must think I'm stupid. I'm not stupid. So, at the very bottom of this, you can see when I left. Right? March 3rd. March 3rd. Yeah, same girl that goes in the back and talks to her prisoner boyfriend. He shouldn't have a phone, but does. He's a cop killer. Lovely. You guys, you guys are something. All right. So first, my DoorDash app wouldn't even work today. Yeah, wouldn't even fucking work. And then I got a complaint, so I have to address the complaint. Here's the pictures, DoorDash. See, the kid, the kid has the food. Uh, so I did have text to this lady telling her I'm sorry that it's taking so long. That they deleted those. Um, I mean, I, that's the lady. That's your girl, right? Yeah. See. So I actually looked on my DoorDash app to find the text. Also, deleted. Nobody else suspects a thing. Guess who? Guess who has it? My guys have it. So when you go to jail, they'll charge you and they'll deal with that. So we got that, and then we get look, look at this. All your names. Every time you cause a problem for me, we get Doug now. We got Greg, Tim, and Doug over the last couple days. So I've added them, I believe. I think I added them to my to our list. Yep. These are all people that work for you. Name one of my guys. Quote one meeting. And then Mr. Perry's like Don't go to the don't don't, don't go to the airport and don't go uh to a hotel rooms. They'll kidnap you. They're that desperate. They'll actually just kidnap you. Grab her and throw her on the plane. It's, if I just disappear, you think nobody will know? You're off your nut. <clears throat> We've been he, you've been planning the second false arrest forever. There's the McNamara email on the first one. And then the bond conditions where you admitted guilt and agreed to stop. How often are you in Oklahoma? What are you doing with your time? How many times have you been with my family and with people I work with? Did you go around and tell my, everybody my son was your stepson? How dare you? What a gross thing to do. I was told about it. Your son looked wildly uncomfortable. It made me uncomfortable. I wanted to help him so bad. And uh, I didn't know what to say. I was afraid I might make it worse. But Charles was going around telling everybody who would listen that Dennis is his stepson. And you're married and he's going to get you pregnant. And we're all like, you are off your nut. She's not, she doesn't want to have a kid. Definitely not one with you. I mean, then then they're all, th this guy's got women locked in a basement somewhere. Creepy Chucky that he is. This is Kirkendall, isn't it? We're quoting judges. What does that mean? Explain to the judge in your hearing now, Judge Parker and Judge Egan, explain to both judges, what does it mean that I have that? Explain it. You don't know, do you? You sure you want me to put you on the stand? You sure you want a hearing? Make sure that's really what you want. Because if you really want a hearing, you're going to get to ask some questions like that. And if I can out sing up a cop who's smart, and a Florida State's attorney who's smart, and Mr. Mitchell who's smart, at least to some extent, and they don't have Huntington's disease, and they can remember what's already been said, and, they, and you don't have to do puppets and crayons so much with them, well, how bad is it going to be for you? Because you do have Huntington's disease, and you can't remember who you told what to, and you can't remember fuck. You're caught trafficking women. You're caught. I've said it over and over and over, and I said no. I said get the fuck out of my life. Get out of it. We quote you every day. We have for seven years. This was in 2015. 2015. People in Lubbock were so pissed off at you that you did that to me. They fully expected you and Matt Powell and Josh Burson to make it right with me. And when you didn't, that got us a hell of a lot more intel. The fact that you'll go around asking who told on me gets us a hell of a lot of uh, uh, intel. How dare you? You got a lot of nerve. So, you, I mean, I don't know what to tell you. You're just not all there. It's embarrassing. All this stuff that we get... 
you're pissing people off. Nobody likes problems. They don't like your suffering. If you watch the news, people can see, you know, there's a tragedy or a tr somebody does something horrible to another person. Everybody runs to the aid of the victim, not the offender. They want the offender out of there. Get, get him out of here. Jail. Get that guy in jail. Why do you think you're any different? You are something. You are a special kind of stupid. All this we got after you did something horrible to me. You caused me a loss. If I lose a, an eyelash, we get more. You contact me, we get more. You take my privacy, we get more. You sure you want, Mr. Perry? What did I just say? When you contact me, we always find out more. When you contact me, we always get more. When you invade my privacy, we always get more. You're not getting shit. You're getting told on. And it is high time you get your head out of your ass and stop being delusional and stop bullshitting yourself and stop embarrassing everybody and tell yourself the truth. You're caught. Every day for a decade. What day is he going to use this to arrest you? And finally, it's your, your skank bitch is gone. Nightmare's over. We're sick of you. Everybody's sick of this and of what you're doing to me. Everybody's sick of you. We get the information, not you. Now, Mark, I'm fucking done with your, you know, explaining the same thing to your mental slow pay client, whatever the hell he is. You contact me, we always get more. When he contacts me, we always get more. When you contact me, we always get more. When you contact me, we always find out more. You're caught trafficking people. That's a serious life sentence. No other victim has what I have. It's different when you do it to me. We get it before, not after. You're not getting shit, but told on. He's typing in my other phone right now. We always get. We always get. <coughs> told on. Ten years, every day, all day long. Stop bullshitting yourself. You look like a buffoon ass. You always get told on. You're a fucking reject. You don't tell anybody we're a couple. We are not a couple. You're a delusional whack job. You're an embarrassment to everybody else. I said no. I said, no, you're caught. No other victim has all this. You're caught. Stop bullshitting yourself. When you contact me, we always get more intel. You get told on more is what you get. It's 10 years of it every day, all day long. You need to act like you understand what it means that we have this. And you act like you have no fucking idea. Fucking embarrassing. I can't do stupid Charles. I'm done with it. We're done with it. I said no to being trafficked. Guys in Houston who bought me, I said no. We, I know about you. Any other victim know before? You threaten us again. I'll kick your ass personally. You won't, you will not get near me. You will not even get fucking near me. I'll, I'll kick your ass as much as I would, Charles. You stay away from me. All of you. Stay the fuck away from me. I said no. I said no. Charles Perry, I said no. You guys in Houston that think you bought me, I said no. You're caught too. You're caught too. Just as much as Perry is. I said no. All of you. Stay the fuck away from me. Get out of my phone. Fix. You know what he said? There's no bra. Charles is like, I'm gonna take your car and I'll get you a new car if you tell me who these guys are. No. What he said in March 2020 is, Cynthia's privacy is not to be invaded. At no time did she need to lie for you. At no time did she have to lie for you. Do not invade her privacy. You don't contact her or her family again. And if you took something, give it back. You owe her a, leg a legit debt. Pay that. Give it back. Fix what you broke and get the fuck out or I'm going to do it for you. Through the normal legal process, I will do it for you. When we quote you, that's what that is, dum dum. He's building a case against you. No means no. I said no. Trying to force me against my will gets us more intel and you will end up, you're, you're going to jail. We can't wait. 
No more repeat. Don't have to repeat myself ever again. I won't be broke ever again. So, uh, I said no. No means no. You want to do a false arrest? Well, we've been saying. I told you so. I'm trying to intimidate. It's called abuse of power, abuse of office. There's like, like there's they got like twenty charges every time you breathe. If it if it if it causes injury to me, is that we don't care what Tulsa police are doing? They're not helping us. All these years we quote you, we get, we got that just fine. We don't need their help. What do we need their help for? They're not doing the work. We are. So who's going to arrest you? And how bad is it going to be? And when? Answer that for this for the judge, Charles. Answer that, okay? This is how. Here's the thing. You got your little weirdo club. And outside of that is everybody else. Everybody else thinks like this guy. Leave me alone. I don't want proof of this. Please leave me alone. Hey, man. Leave women the fuck alone. When they're in public, when they're doing anything, you don't have the right to their attention. You don't have the right to step into their personal space. You don't have the right to them. Especially if they're making it very clear they don't want to be talked to. But even when they're not, unless a woman is giving you enthusiastic and Continuous body language and signs that she wants to talk to your ugly dumbass, then leave her the fuck alone. Find a date a different way. Okay, it's not clever, it's not cool, it's not cute. It's garbage. It's absolute garbage behavior, and you're a garbage person if you do it. I don't care if it's in public, it doesn't fucking matter. You don't have the right to her, and you need to leave her alone. And this is bacon. Okay, and if I go to the club, I uh, ask the person, I said, please let Sheriff Reed know. You don't have to do a raid and upset everybody to make proper ID. If I go back, walk in and ask for me, and I'm happy to talk to him. I know Charles asked you to do a raid. I'm telling you, you don't need to. Just come in and ask for me, and don't upset the whole place. So there's that. Because, Mr. Perry, you were caught. You are caught again. It's called abuse of office and abuse of power. You're in a lot of trouble. You just need, you need to get a, a, a special education teacher to help you understand the worst set. Because you're like this guy. Oh, that's okay. I don't care. Leave me alone. I can't live here anymore. This makes... He says the same thing. I'm going to get you. She's like, do you like having a camera in your face? He can't understand a word she says. Do you want me to go get the pictures? Mr. Perry has people in Oklahoma where I live, where I'm being a law-abiding citizen, just trying to work, take fucking pictures of me everywhere I go. It's going to take them into court and show he's not stalking. Well, but you're where I am. Why is that? How often are you in Oklahoma? What is it that you do all day with your time? How many times have you taken my family to dinner do not call anybody again and tell them we're a couple or that you're my boyfriend or anything. You're a job for me and nothing more. You fucking reject. I haven't seen you since 2013. I left. Then I've tried 11 times to get a protective order or a judge to make you leave me alone, Mr. Perry. And you had to buy your way out of that 11 times. Either a... Either a... Did That's you see what he just did? Did you see that? Feel. Eleven times I, you had to buy your way out. Eleven times you committed a criminal act of buying, buying a judge to get out of something I wanted. That means what I want is for you to be gone. Get out. Nobody invited you to Oklahoma. Nobody invited you here. Ask, tell the judge, why are you in Oklahoma? Why? Get out. You don't have a choice. As much as we quote you every day, it shows how deep in delusion you are, how whack job you are, that you think you have a choice. Don't contact me. I fucking hate it. This guy, wacky. Same thing. Do you want me to get the pictures of you? Oh my god, you completely missed the point. I'm gonna get you. They're the same. These two are the same. Wacky, they, don't, they completely failed to respond appropriately to what was just said. You're filming my father and my fucking sister. How does this make oh, you feel? You want to put all those scratches on your arm? You want to see the Scratches? Want, I got scratches. I can show you the pictures right now. No, I want you to leave my family fucking alone. 
Keep hanging outside of there. Dude, I promise you, you're gonna get yours and you're not gonna fuck. You can bring whoever the fuck you want. That's okay. You're gonna be not They're not doing a thing wrong. Perry, you admitted guilt and you promised you'd never contact me or my family again. And at this point, nobody believes a word you say. If you knew the things people say behind y'all's back, all of you would be too afraid to show your face again, I promise you. If we know what you just said, we talked to a lot of people about a lot of things.